I'm Andrew Lamming with some big updates from this year's federal budget. The big topics of course affect small business, where a 1.5% tax cut basically frees up small business to invest with more confidence in more staff and more capital. To that end, we are accelerating the depreciation. It means if you purchase something over the next two years, 20,000 of it can be immediately depreciated. That makes it basically tax free meaning you don't have to pay the government and then get the money back as it depreciates. That really creates a boost where small business under $2 million turnover will be jumping out and investing in capital, which employs other Australians, as well as manufacturing where those products are obviously provided from this country. Beyond small business, you can have unincorporated uh, small business and they get a 5% tax uh, deduction as well, which works out similar to a 1.5% tax cut because of the fact that they are not incorporated and not using normal uh, small business tax arrangements. For aged care, there's always great interest in getting places into Redlands. And what we're seeing is a greater demand for places and a greater demand for home assist and home and community care. This is the service that keeps you in your home rather than needing to move into a formal facility. And I want to see more investment there because a dollar spent keeping someone living in the home they love is way better spent than having to run a professional facility. Now, with early childhood on the other end of the spectrum, all the news has been around balancing up the needs of stay-at-home mums with those going into the workforce. There are changes to the family tax benefit, but only once your children turn six. And my firm view is, once all your kids are off at school and they're over the age of six, those carers need to re-engage in the workforce and not be paid money to stay at home. We can't afford that luxury anymore. And any middle class Australian family will tell you they're out there trying to find a job. We've made childcare way more affordable for them and it's also good for the economy and for, the, for these parents as well to continue their skills and remain productive and confident. That means that childcare will go from being a 25% out of pocket to just 15% out of pocket. The rest of it paid by the government if you're earning under $65,000 a year. It's 5% increase in funding if you're between ninety dollars and $165,000 a year. Now that's childcare becoming way more available and accessible, giving mums the chance and choice to work when before they were locked out because of the cost of childcare. Now we all know about what we call intangibles. These are the GST exemptions available to big multinational corporations that don't make anything tangible. We're talking about Airbnb, where you can basically uh, replace hotel rooms by staying in someone's residence. Or Uber, where you can basically call to be moved from one place to another without using a taxi service. Well, what we're learning now is that we are taking more action to make sure that these big multinationals pay their share of tax by making Uber drivers register for GST. The other great trick by international corporations is to charge themselves royalties, call them a business expense and use it as a way of getting out of tax. Well, we're strengthening what's called transfer pricing. You can't take an asset like a phone and say that there were 90% of the value of the phone was a royalty cost and hide your, your profits anymore. And Australia's leading the way in that respect and that's so important. It, for too long, international uh, companies have been using elaborate tricks to escape paying tax. That's a bad thing. But it also puts domestic companies, Australian companies at a great disadvantage, for instance, paying GST where their equivalent foreign domiciled company doesn't. Lastly, they're repatriating all their profits overseas. So if they are earning a dollar in Australia, it's here they should be paying that tax. And that requires an agreement between all of the countries to share information on what these companies are doing. Now to the big one, job seekers. Uh, it's in our very strong view that young people transitioning out of school should be doing something to earn their welfare. It's a simple proposition. On the Bay Islands, where there's very little business, given the proportion of the population, many of us have to travel for jobs, and that's very hard because you can't afford often as a young job seeker uh, to pay for the water taxi there and back. The government subsidy is only $20 a fortnight, and that's not gonna cover those expenses. So I want to see more work for the dollar on the islands, and that means that if you form a group of 10 young people, for the first time, you don't have to be working in a non-profit service, you can be working in a small business. That's really exciting, doing 28-day placements where the government pays the wage. 
If it's a Work for the Dog project, the government pays $3,500 per participant to ensure that we have good supervision. I don't want to see young people just active. I want to see them active and connecting to a real job. And there's no better way than having them doing work experience in an existing small business. So whether it's a non-profit entity or council, an aged care facility or a small business, young people can now be connected there, working 25 hours a week and spending the rest of the time searching for work. Keep in mind, we now say that it's not just for under 40s, but in fact, all the way up to retirement age, you need to be seeking out that kind of activity. It becomes optional once you're over the age of 60, but it's still important that you give it a shot. There's plenty of places where your experience at the age of 60 is incredibly valuable in the workplace. And after all, the government's paying the wage. They're covering the insurance. So it's a very attractive proposition for businesses who'd love to have an experienced senior on the floor helping out, offering better services. Look, in short, I was very vocal at the start of the year about where the first budget last year was taking Australia. The four most unpopular elements have been removed by Tony Abbott, and I provided him with that list, and he's delivered. And make no mistake, it's the budget last week that's going to turbocharge the small business sector in Australia and get the economy going. I want to see the green shoots coming through, and Australians need to trust that tough decisions last year are going to make a difference this year. It worked in the UK under the Conservative government. It's worked in New Zealand, where they're teaching us a thing or two. The tough decisions last year will yield returns, but it does take a year or more for those to become evident. I'm hoping that some of the small business investment this year will yield pretty quick returns, and that's a good thing for Australia. If you've got any questions on how the budget works, let me know. A lot of thought goes into it. There has to be winners and losers, but of the budgets that I've seen over the last 10 years, this is probably the best received one that I've seen since I entered politics in 2004. All the very best.